you see chat GPT? I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if you're saying when you explain how each word is represented as a number, but it doesn't really know the meaning. Does Are you saying it, chat GPT, for example, does not know the meaning of the words and, and what it's talking about? It just talks uh, about the context that usually knows the words? No. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Really? You, I, I... <laughs> you, I, that's my current understanding. Yeah, I had it write it a couple is, of good letters, and it's really good. It seems to know it's, what it's talking about. Remember, it has been, in the case of Google, has been exposed to all of the materials that are open source, non-copyrighted materials in the University of Michigan Library. Right. So a, mi a million books. It's... As a, it orders those, the tokens of those, and then it examines, so how many orders of magnitude are we up there? So I, it's an excellent question. I'm asking myself that exact same question that you just asked. Good. <laughs> and I, I believe that, yes, that is what the machines are doing. The machines at this point do not comprehend meaning the way that we do. Mm -hmm. And this is the spooky part here. I Please, I'm going to cut it short after saying this. We humans learn in childhood from the time we're one year old to the time when does speech become Uh, fluid in humans. We, Maureen and I did not have children, but humans in the course of four or five years encounter so many instances of speech that they know the order of the words and they attach meaning just to the order of the words. So by the, what humans have learned, it's through the ordering of sounds and the tone of the delivered sounds that they attach meaning. I, it's, uh, it's, I am working through the reality of that myself. I don't know if I believe it solely, but that I believe if you went to the conferences on AI, that the speakers would say, that's how it's doing it. Okay, thank you. Tom also so, has a question in chat. He says, with language compilers, the tokenization process is followed by processing to check syntax against a grammar. Is the idea of a grammar used in natural language processing, or does the processing leave out this step? It knows the grammar. It knows the grammar of all the languages it's aware of. Grammar contains meaning. If you know the grammar, you have, in a sense, you have in your knowledge of the grammar meaning. Uh, the object of a preposition, so I walk to the store with candy. Again, you know, I'm not doing that very well. I'm pulling it off. But yes, the grammar contains meaning. And I found myself checking that as I putting all these together that yes, it does. It's in the grammar, it's in the order, uh, in the ordering. Yes. Uh, it's a it's a wake up call to me. Ray Let's Mallet. Move oh, go ahead. Ray Mallet has his hand raised. Uh, Ray. Yes, uh, this I think is similar to one of the uh, articles you sent us where um, you could learn by the number of cycles, then the number of times it ran, and you could pick whether you want to use Jane Austen books or Star Trek or Shakespeare. Um, what wasn't clear to me in that article was how it confirms the learning process, how it improves itself. So what is it checking against? The actual text of the what you chose for it to learn on? 
Well, if you if you go back to those matrices that I showed you, the the vector, the matrices, the two mm -hmm. D, as it learns things, those are gain the tensor reporting of the tokens to that network adds weights and changes biases of the uh, axons and the dendrites in those formulas. As it gets a, a 10 million different books reported to it, the ordering of those weights and biases in that those neurons of the neural network gain sophistication. And in the natural language processing, as it goes through the updated weights and biases, it comes out in what is meaningful to we humans. So it may construct a, the mathematical tokenization of, say, Jane Austen's books. Yes. And then it it learns in cycles and always compares to that model to see how what kind of score it can get for improvement. Yes. You, okay. you, you use the correct word, the model. It models it in its own way, which is that cube of that mathematical formulas. Maureen's sister worked for uh, electronic engineers, IEEE. And at one point, I assumed that what it does is creates this long mathematical formula, you know, with a hundred different Greek letters in it with arctans and cosines. And it just executes that hundred Greek letter mathematical function instantaneously with the GPUs from NVIDIA in the memory of the computer and it's instantaneous. Uh, what did they say? Uh, a billion mathematical translate uh, executions, mathematical computations in a second is what the new GPUs are doing, the graphical processing units from NVIDIA. They're doing a billion a second. There's another question I see up there. Um, yes, I was wondering, I don't even know if I could state this well. Um, so it tokenizes words and it has a corpus and it checks back and forth and um, tries to figure out if what, it, you know, what it's going to do, what it's going to deliver. So is there any learning involved in these AI programs in which our acceptance of something or, I mean, does it, do the values and the tokenizations perhaps change? Yes. Because of You're our right. interaction. Yes, you'll see that today. Okay. Uh, you'll see that today. And the other article, uh, there were four articles. One was about the Kenyans that look at the text part if you got the good part of that job you're saying uh is this a meaningful and you know you'll type something in or something will be typed in for you you will read the text and supply an answer does this answer the question so there's uh, a thousand english speaking kenyans that click yes that means what that's an answer, to, a good meaning to the answer to the question that was asked, or no, that was a bad meaning. So we'll that, see it. We'll see it. Okay, so that was, but that was constructed as an exercise, right? And I just. We'll see how it's done. Okay. And it's, on, <laughs> it's, on, it, it's ongoing. It's yeah. ongoing. You, as you say yes or no, this is good or bad. Uh -huh. It it backward propagates. So not only does it flow one direction in that mm -hmm. matrices, right. when you you supply, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. It backward propagates the weights and validates the weights mm -hmm. and the biases in the matrices. Do the tokens 
then does that change the value of the tokens? No, the tokens stay the same and the weights are changed and the bias in the nucleus is changed. Okay. So here's, I'm going to move on unless, oh, Tom has a question. Yeah, just real quick. So I want to follow up on that grammar question. So it sounds like uh, thinking about what you've been saying is that the internal representation for the data that it's learning, quote unquote, is really that uh, summation model that you, the mathematical terminology with the summa and all those. And um, that's almost like a kind of a linear programming kind of uh, representation. So that so two two questions around that. One is that is that correct that that's the internal representation for this data it's taking in, where it has the different weights and it has the different inputs and so on. And secondly, it seems to be moving away from a digital model. That's that's really more analog because it's got multiple inputs, and uh, the 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 inputs can be weighted in in different manners. Right, it's not just on off kind of thing. You're correct. In both instances, uh, you're going to have to remind me of the first question, but the second question, yes, they are modeling this all. That's when I drew that one where it put the nerve next to the model. That's what they're trying to do. Right. Okay. So so they don't really need to uh, have anything that's, that's nonlinear then because they can change the if they need to model something more subtly, then they can change the weights of one of the inputs or add another input. And then they don't have to do anything that's like a, a chaos model or anything that's non-linear because they're, they're, they can they can add more inputs and they can change the weights. And so they can get pretty, pretty granular when they're approximating. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How granular? That's the question. Uh, the, let me see if I can remember. D diminishing gradient. That is one of the functions of uh, quantum mechanics is the uh, diminishing gradient. Does the gradient get so small of a change that it's not worth it? That's where human, you know, we. I better stop there because I could get into the, a deep, deep hole on discussing this. But you have hit the issues that I'm working through in my mind. I'm glad that I've been able to present it to this level because this is the questions. I believe, yes, the answer is yes. It's not, the machine has no concept of meaning. It is the mathematical representations in a highly convoluted network that can be examined by vectors, by matrix mathematics, with these extremely fast processors going in vectors, angular, uh, uh, multi-directional models. It's, uh, we, it's hard to grasp the level of permutations that are occurring in these models. They two two hundred billion mathematical formulas in the current models. Just a quick comment on your idea of a gradient. I would, it kind of made me think that when when uh, when numerical analysis is performed by computer, what they're really trying to do is approximate uh, differential equations, where we would actually have a formula or something to actually find a derivative or, or an integral. They they iterate over it many many times to 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 approximate it, and it sounds like that's kind of what we're doing with these even things that would be more nonlinear or, or even, um, you know, chaos kind of super, super uh, changes in outputs for very minor input changes. Yes. So, uh, that, that, that's pretty interesting. The fact that they have so much processing power and so much storage capability allows all this stuff to happen. And that's really the big breakthrough. Uh, in the last that year. is the breakthrough. Yeah. And this is, this will not be understandable to many. We humans use emotion or the inference, oh, I just got a gut feeling to make it unnecessary to continue testing probabilities. We say, I, got, I looked at 20 possibilities, now I have a gut instinct. I don't have to look at 200 theories, I have an instinct. So that's what human instinct, human mo emotions are for. But let's go. We've only got an hour, <laughs> an hour and a half. And I got a lot of stuff, which I may start cutting short. This is the language model, natural language processing. You say 
it goes to this model back here. This is the cube, and it's going back and forth to you. At this point, for you, we heat normal humans, there's no connection to the external world. That's the safety factor. Here's chat GPT. I'm going to skip really quickly through this. There's login if you've gone in before. You can sign up if you are new to it. If you are new, here's the authentication where I use Google all the time because it speeds it up. There was, a, there was a 1990s thing called Lightweight Directory Access Protocol that Google picked up that logs you in. And here's some things to make sure you're human and not creating a fake EID. It asks for your birth date. And then it asks you for a telephone number that it sends you a code. So your phone number is becoming an authentication value. Here is what it looks like. So you get into chat GPT, the left, you must confirm that you understand this is gonna produce hallucinations at times. This is gonna produce false information at times. You have to confirm that. Then on the right is the actual GPT information top. I'm gonna to go to the next one. I repeat this a number of times. This opens and closes the back area, the panel. Here's information about you and the money and if you have, if you're doing a research project, you're going to ask questions repeatedly about a topic. You can put in that information that's repeatedly asked. Here's the prompt area. And here's the two models. We've been, most of what we've been looking at is 3.5. GPT-4, model four is a cost item. You have to pay to do that. Here's an example. I've closed the side panel. Notice that. Here's a much smaller. I typed in the phrase, tell me a little bit about Ashland, Oregon. If I were a tourist, remembering these, the prompt engineering paper that we did, tell me a little bit about Ashland, Oregon as if I were a tourist looking for a vacation. Limit it to three paragraphs. Here's what it produced. Here's the response. Look to the right of the response. Look right here. Can you see that right there? We're going to go to that in a second. But any questions about how GPT, you type in, the, you authenticate yourself, you prove who you are, and then you prove, you prove yeah, there's going to be screw-ups by chat GPT. Then you begin using it. Here's an example of the use. I close the side panel. Here's a close-up of it. Again, focusing here, I'm going to cut no, not cut. I'm going to copy and paste my response to Google Docs. Now, I changed the questions a little bit. Notice the question is a little different. I asked for bullet points. Tell me a little bit about Ashland, Oregon. Give me not just the good things, but the bad things, and put it into bullet points. That was the prompt that I engineered. Then look here. This is the questions that people asked. Do I provide feedback? If I say this is a good response, if I click the thumbs up, it backward propagates up the 
matrix up the matrices and increments the weight and adjusts the bias formula. Say, oh, this guy likes this. Just infinitesimally, it increases it. But notice the copy function. Notice the copy function. That's what I want to deal with. I am now, I jumped from chat GPT to Google Docs. I'm in Google Docs now. I go to, with my Google ID, I go to docs.google.com. The very upper left there is the plus sign that I've emphasized. I click the plus sign and it create, gives me a blank document. I cl click where I want to insert and then I right click. I'm going to say that again, but first I'm going to digress. I'm going to digress a little bit. Look at this little piece of information here on the right side. Help me write. Help me write. In good, now we're using Google now. Help me write. We're going to see that in the Google presentation where that that's where it will write for you. But we're focusing, we're right clicking, we're clicking and then right clicking our mouse. Again, we're in browser. I right click, it brings up a context sensitive menu and then it, I click paste. And what do you think happens? It pastes in the text that I've copied. Any questions on these, uh, on this generating a response? You can ask anything you want. I just asked about Ash. I clicked that one little, did you, I want to emphasize you, that point that you saw this to the right. Remember this. Responding. You're going to get better responses over time as you use those. Then I copied it. I go to, I switched to Google Docs and I clicked and right clicked and then I pasted and there it is. Then in Google Docs, you can format the item. Notice all the information about Google Docs up here. We're, that's a whole different presentation. But continuing on with chat GPT, it's the big kahuna because it's available in a browser. Here's the prompt. It's available in Apple iOS, so mobile devices like iPads and iPhones. And it's available on smartphones. So iPhone and Android. Notice where you enter it. Now I'm going to go, I chose Google Android to show the example. So in Google Play, here's downloading. Here's what it looks like to download. Then I you go through the, here it is installed on my Android phone. It's and, and then this is a Google phone. Uh, I store my apps in folders. This is just an example of a folder that I use. Here, it's going to go through that saying you have to authenticate, you have to prove who you are. Here's what it looks like when I started it up. I click in my message area or I click on the microphone to enter and it brings up the, t the keyboard. I Notice the microphone where I can speak into this text message box. I've put this message in here. I supplied the, the prompt. Everybody remembers prompt, right? 
Think of me as a complete AI novice. Ha ha. Tell me, please, the best way to construct a prompt where you'll most effectively in respond. So here's how it provides the response in green there. And then guess what I do on Android? I press and hold, tap and hold for a duration, duration holding it for a second, not just touching, but touching and holding. And it brings up a context sensitive menu that has copy in it, and it has the responses in it, good response, bad response, or regenerate it. I can copy it. I can go to Google Docs. And in the Google Docs, I press and hold. It brings up a context-sensitive menu where I click paste, and then it puts it in Google Docs. And then I quickly, uh, I tried to make this a one sheet thing you could print out. It's a four step algorithm, basically. You generate the information you want. You press and hold, it brings up a menu, you type, you press on copy, that goes into the memory of the phone. Then you go to Google Docs. Notice down at the bottom, I've got which program you're in. You press and hold it in a blank area. It brings up a content context sensitive menu. You type paste. You hit paste and it puts it in to Google Docs and then you can edit Google Docs. And then uh, I'm going to very quickly go through the rest of this. We're getting to two o'clock almost. We only uh, we got a lot to go in a half hour. I'm going to probably go not cover all of it. But this is available both on the uh, browser version and the. Android ver on the smartphone version. Notice I go to the menus on the browser version. It's under where your your information is, your login information. Click it, brings up the I call this the hamburger menu, and then I go to settings and custom instructions. It tells you what custom instructions are. And then if you're doing repeated research on a specific topic, you can have the information to add. That you, Rather than having to type in a bullet list or think of me as a scientist covering the folding of proteins in a uh, 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 wheat a medium. Yeah, I'm faking it there. But you can put all of these in these areas and it will continually supply that when you add a question. So you can repeatedly inquire of chat GPT without having to repeatedly type in voluminous amounts of information. That's just an aside. I didn't know, I wanted to improve, to include that, but I didn't know exactly how. 